Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. This is a Sunday, October 13th, 2024, and this is a tropical update for the All Hazards Consortium sensitive information sharing environment where we do share information across platforms uh, and across sectors from uh, public sector liaisons within emergency management organizations uh, at the state level and private sector organizations who are trying to move things across the country. Uh, keep commerce going, restore power, utility crews, and restore communications um, around the country. So this is a tropical update and just want to let you know that uh, there is nothing brewing uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Everything is uh, clear uh, down to the south. You might notice uh, here in this uh, satellite loop, this is from the GOES satellite uh, orbiting 22,300 miles up, by the way. Um, it's pretty incredible. Uh, we see some showers and thunderstorms developing in the Western Caribbean. Uh, that's all they are, just some showers and scattered thunderstorms, not expected to develop uh, in any into anything. And if we move a little bit further south here uh, towards South America and Central America, a couple of storms flaring up there. Uh, we don't see anything uh, that we need to keep our eyes on with regard to tropical development, which is great. Uh, so I'm going to take this full screen because I want to widen out a little bit and show you the Atlantic because we do have our eyes on a potential uh, developing system. And uh, this is what uh, the wide tropics show. I'm going to uh, bring this down just a little bit and I'll bring Florida into the picture. And if we look out over the Atlantic Ocean way out here, uh, once again, you can see the sunset uh, coming. Uh, it's dark in Africa and it's coming across the Atlantic. Oh, nighttime comes too soon now uh, that we're in the fall here in the United States, uh, but it's on the way. So we are watching this low level circulation here. It does not have any thunderstorms associated with it, uh, but it is something currently that's that we're keeping an eye on. National Hurricane Center uh, keeping their eye on it as well. And uh, I'll show you that in Geo Collaborate here in just a second. Uh, but I just wanna show you the satellite imagery for a moment, as you can see what's going on. You see the, the turning in this low pressure. So it's a fairly well-defined low pressure system, but just pretty much at the surface. The uh, conditions are not very conducive right now for this to develop in this area into a tropical system. However, as it drifts and moves to the west, uh, conditions over the next several days will become more conducive uh, for thunderstorm development around this low pressure system. And there are chances that a tropical depression uh, could form. Uh, let me show you the sea surface temperatures are important as well when we're watching this. And I can superimpose the sea surface temperatures underneath of these clouds so uh, there you go. You can see where the warmer temperatures are. That's these areas in here, the, the reds, those red colors. And uh, it's still warm in here, but not, not really um, hot. Uh, so this is in an area that's not really too uh, conducive to development atmospherically. Sea surface temperatures are warm enough for this to develop, but uh, just not the atmospheric conditions. And one other thing I want to show you, we have here in the United States, we have three GOES satellites now. We have GOES-16, which is GOES East. That's what I'm using right now to show you this satellite uh, uh, loop. Uh, we have GOES-18, which is orbiting over the equator and at 135 degrees west. So we can see Hawaii, uh, we can see the Pacific, uh, the West Coast uh, very uh, good, very easily. Uh, and we also have GOES-19, which was recently launched and is now undergoing testing over the center part of the country. They're all orbiting at the equator. They're geostationary satellites. So they can look at the same thing. They can look at the same part of the earth all the time. They rotate at the exact same speed or they orbit, <laughs> excuse me, at the exact same speed as the earth rotates. So they stay over the same position. So you can see these uh, sea surface temperatures here. Once it gets over here, we're gonna have much warmer sea surface temperatures. We call that the fuel for hurricanes and tropical storms uh, to develop. They do need that fuel. And uh, the A Atlantic here uh, in the main development region is plenty warm. 
So we will keep our eye on this, but I do want to show you one other thing. The Europeans have a similar satellite to our GOES system, and uh, it's called UMETSAT. And I want to show you this same system that's, or, that's uh, rotating uh, in the Atlantic, in the tropical Atlantic, uh, but from uh, the European satellite standpoint. So here we go. We've moved over. Now look, here is Africa. And uh, you can see the Sahara Desert here. Whenever we see dust coming off the Sahara because of strong winds, this is where it's coming from. And we can see it come across the ocean, sometimes all the way uh, to here in the United States. But here is another look, and I can zoom in on it uh, with that area of low pressure that we're watching. So uh, it is not going to escape the eyes of meteorologists, uh, the National Hurricane Center, or anybody else. We will be watching this. It's just a low-level swirl right now, but it looks very well defined. Uh, and then we'll see what happens over the next seven days. There is no immediate threat to the United States. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be moving in a westerly direction. Uh, and it will likely have some sort of thunderstorm activity developing around it when it gets closer to the Leeward Islands here. I'll switch back to... Uh, to our GOES East satellite so we can see it coming. It's going to be going moving towards the west, so we'll be watching in this area uh, for any potential impact over the next seven days. Again, no immediate threat, uh, which is great news. Now, I want to switch over to GeoCollaborate and show you what that looks like because we do have the graphic depiction from the National Hurricane Center on here in GeoCollaborate. You can see that X that X is right over that swirl of clouds. By the way, I, I pulled in the GOES satellite imagery into GeoCollaborate so we could have additional reference uh, here. And I'll zoom in just a little bit here to GeoCollaborate and, and get a little bit closer in on that system. So you can see that swirl. That's what we were just talking about. It's expected to move in this direction with no development here, uh, but that's what this area is identified uh, for by the National Hurricane Center, that there is a 40% chance that there will be something developing in this region over the next seven days. The probability over the next two days, 10%. See that? 10%. But then it moves here into this area that's more conducive. So that does include uh, Puerto Rico. So we will be doing tropical updates each day to let everybody know what's going on with this particular system, uh, if it gets named uh, or not, or it just uh, goes away and doesn't develop. Uh, but the chances are about 40% over the next seven days this could develop into a tropical uh, depression or a tropical storm. And then once it gets outside of this envelope, uh, it's too far ahead to determine where this might go. So um, I would just say, keep your eyes open, watch our tropical updates, and uh, we'll let you know what's going on with this particular update. Now in GeoCollaborate, I just want to zoom in here for a minute on Florida, uh, because yesterday we mentioned uh, that there are still flood warnings in the state of Florida. That's because so much rain fell out of Hurricane Milton. It takes a long time for the water uh, to make its way back out to the Gulf of Mexico or the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, because of that, we have flash flood warnings. If you live in any areas uh, in Florida around here, um, I'll turn the satellite picture off here uh, just for a moment. And um, here we go. All right, I'll turn that off so we can see this a little bit more clearly. You see all of the areas here that have flash flood warnings. This is at Hillsborough County, Pasco County, um, Hernando County, um, and also up towards um, Citrus County, east of Homosassa Springs. I'm sure if you live there, you are well aware of the rivers that are flooding. Some areas uh, have resulted in evacuations that are needed because the rivers are rising so high. And unfortunately, since it is so flat in Florida, uh, the rivers will remain high likely through the week, likely through the week. And uh, here's another flood warning as well for Volusia County and the Seminole County 
um, right in along the, to the Space Coast here in parts of extreme western Brevard County, maybe a little bit of Orange County as well. Here is Orlando uh, right here. No immediate flash flood or flood warnings in Orlando, although the lakes are probably very high uh, in Central Florida because of where um, the rain is uh, draining from Hurricane Milton. On the east coast of Florida, you can see we still have um, current rip current statements. So the water is still very churned up all the way down from uh, Boca Raton on up north to the Space Coast and past Daytona Beach. Uh, there are rip current advisories out there. Please uh, be very, very careful. Just go in there to wet your toes. Uh, you don't want those waves uh, and that rip current to pull you out. Uh, leads to a lot of deaths around the country. Uh, we also have here uh, another rip current statement up to the north, and that extends on up into southeastern Georgia. So yes, it's uh, very churned up. Um, Milton is long gone, but the pressure gradient with a high pressure to the north uh, is still pushing uh, air towards the coast, and that makes it very conducive uh, to rip currents. Now, I just want to talk uh, for a moment about the Helene um, efforts uh, that extend all the way from uh, the Panhandle or the Big Bend of Florida uh, from right here uh, up through Georgia into Western South Carolina and into this area of Western North Carolina around Asheville. Right now, there's a wind advisory uh, for the Asheville area with potential high gusts of 30 to 35 miles per hour or so. Uh, perhaps with higher gusts as well. Uh, that's in the, the higher elevations. Um, and of course, we have a tremendous amount of workers focusing on Western North Carolina to uh, help repair railroad tracks, help repair roads, help uh, shore up riverbeds that have collapsed in the devastating events brought on by Hurricane Helene. So as far as power goes, this is the way it looks so far. And I've put in North Carolina and Georgia there. These are the two areas that are still uh, being focused on uh, along Helene's path. Uh, but power has been restored to 5,943,600 meters or customers. Remember, that's just one person uh, as a customer. There are probably two, three, four, five, six, maybe more people uh, living in those residences uh, and certainly more in businesses uh, that have been restored where people work. But look at that. That is uh, power has been restored to 99.06% of those affected. And I know if you're one of the ones that haven't received it back, damage has been extensive. And so it will be coming back soon, unless, of course, they have to rebuild some of the electric infrastructure. And that is going on as we speak. Matter of fact, we had more than 50,000 workers responding from over 43 states. In, uh, in, in, and that's in addition, DC and also Canada. Our friends from Canada have been down here for a couple of weeks helping to restore power. And that is something that we're very grateful for. And it's all part of the program called Mutual Assistance. Whenever a state is under a threat of being hit by a hurricane or a large storm, they will ask for help. And the utility industry pulls together and states uh, send uh, various bucket trucks and crews, uh, in this case, 43 states, including uh, DC and Canada, uh, pulled together resources and put their trucks and crews, dedicated linemen on the road to head down into the potential disaster area. And they stage outside of that disaster area. So a tremendous amount of work is being done. There's also critical water infrastructure being rebuilt in Asheville. Uh, I know the time is uh, too long uh, to be without water and electric, uh, but just know that they are working very hard. A lot of people are focused on getting these towns back up on their feet. Now, as far as uh, Hurricane Milton goes in uh, Florida, these are the areas that are still impacted. Uh, power is out 
uh, now to 1,401,963 meters. Uh, that is down from yesterday, and uh, power has been restored uh, to about 1.9 million households. I know some folks are getting estimates that by Thursday they should receive power back, particularly in Sarasota, uh, Bradenton, uh, maybe St. Pete Beach and places like that. Just remember, if there are any areas that were significantly damaged, they will be removed from the power restoration um, list because uh, the place uh, of, of residence or business has to be rebuilt. And so electricity cannot run back into that building. Uh, if it were still connected and electricity were turned back on, it could cause a fire. So it's a big safety uh, hazard. And so uh, this is a tremendous amount of work as well. You know, there were a lot of power companies that were working on Helene damage and then they were uh, brought down to Florida uh, to stage to restore power uh, from Hurricane Milton. So uh, that's the way it looks uh, today. I'm, I'm not going to answer a question today. I've got a series of them that I am working on. I do appreciate your questions coming in uh, on the channel. And we will keep our eyes open uh, for sure uh, on this uh, tropical system uh, that is uh, potentially developing over the next... Uh, seven days or so. That's this one right here. And uh, we're monitoring these sea surface temperatures as well. We also have buoys in the ocean. Uh, we have uh, all sorts of uh, gliders in there that go up and down in the ocean and take measurements. Uh, Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute has Argo floats that are pretty cool. They go down in the ocean and they go pretty deep, a couple hundred meters, take readings, temperatures, salinity values, then they come back up to the surface and beam the data uh, out, and then they go back down, and that's what they do. That's what their job is, and we get those uh, readings as well. Uh, we'll show a couple of those to you during our uh, next update, perhaps during the day tomorrow. I also wanted to remind you, those of you that live in the Sarasota-Bradenton area, uh, that the Sarasota-Bradenton Airport uh, is closed and it is closed likely until October 16th while they repair significant damage uh, to their uh, concourse B that covers the screening checkpoint and all 13 aircraft boarding areas. Uh, they lost their roof, uh, so a lot of work is going on right now to repair that so the airport can open. So this is for everybody watching. If you're thinking about flying into Sarasota Bradenton, uh, check with your airlines uh, and check with the airport website uh, because the airport is currently closed and not planning to open until October 16th at 9 a.m. So that's it for today. I appreciate your attention. I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. Uh, the next update will be tomorrow because we have the possibility of a potential tropical system developing in the Atlantic. Currently, no threat to the United States over the next seven days, uh, so that's good news, but we will update you each day until that threat goes away. So uh, please enjoy the rest of your day if you can. Thank you for paying attention. Take care of yourself, and please take care of your neighbors.